No clue they're all Margaret Burke White. They're not all Margaret Burke White, are they? Yeah, they are. This guy's kind of exciting. <laughs> All right, you remember this movie? Uh, it was What Women Want. Mel Gibson's character was able to read the minds of women. Well, the concept might not be that far off. Researchers at the University of Utah are developing a possible way to read minds, and that is today's big eye. The study is published in the October issue of the Journal of Neural Engineering, and researcher Bradley Greger, he joins us now from Salt Lake City. Sir, thank you for being here. How is this supposed to work now, reading people's minds? Do I have this right? Uh, well, thank you very much for having me on the, the program. Um, I tend to shy away from phrases like reading people's minds. Um, and I think, honestly, if you want to know what a woman wants or what she thinks, uh, ask her out for coffee and talk to her. Um, we, re we really uh, are try <laughs> trying to work on something that's going to uh, enable people who have lost the ability to communicate um, have that ability restored. Um, we are tapping into and interfacing with the speech areas of the brain, the, the areas of the brain that understand speech and produce speech. So we're pretty excited about that. And, and in the extreme, you could think of this as mind reading. You said but you're we're really interfacing at with. Trying to help patients who have. Yeah, yeah, yeah you say you're interfacing yes. with. So, so slow down for the rest of us out here. Uh, what does that mean? How do you interface with? I, I guess, how do you get from uh, someone who can't speak tapping into their brain then to understanding? Uh, possibly what they'd like to say. Certainly. So uh, basically what we did is take uh, a grid of microelectrodes, which are basically very tiny wires, and place them on the surface of the patient's brain right over the areas of the brain that uh, are involved in understanding and producing speech. And then using these, these microelectrodes, we were able to record the fluctuations in electricity um, while they spoke, and then we could look at those patterns of electrical fluctuations and determine what word they were going to say. Uh, and we're, we're talking about we'll be able to understand maybe full thoughts, full sentences uh, of what people are trying to say? Well, certainly. In the future, that's where we hope to take things. Right. right now, we're working on just a few number of words, a limited number of words, and we like to get it to where we could do a few dozen words in, in the alphabet. Um, because what? that would enable patients who have lost the ability to speak or communicate get uh, you know a limited uh, ability to communicate restored to them. Uh, all right, and last thing here quickly, how far away are we from implementing this technology? Well, we've we've proven that we can get it to work, and now we just need to refine the device and some of our algorithms that do the decoding. And we hope over the next few years we'll do a yes. few more patients. Um, at that point, we'll be ready to go to FDA and say, uh, can we get permission to do a feasibility trial and really see if we can restore communication to paralyzed patients. Well, Bradley, Gregor, we will be checking in with you then over the years. Can't wait to actually see this. Uh, sounds like you're right on the cusp, and it's only a matter of time. Bradley, Gregor, congratulations on your work. Thank you for being here. You enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much. Well, to read up on that research and its applications, you can head over to our blog. We have it up for you, cnn.com slash TJ. Quick break. I'm right back. You get out of your vehicle what you put into it. So for services big and small, join the 11 million drivers who turn to us. The good wrench experts at their Chevy, 